Today we're talking about the top software tools that every business analyst should know. Stick around. here butterfly and bird watching so <laughs> let's go inside and talk about the software tools of business analyst so I have prepared this presentation for you on the top software tools every business analyst should know or at least know about so here I will be walking you through some of the software tools I have encountered in my career and as well as other people have and it's kind of common in the industry what the tools are that we use as business analysts. I have deliberately left out the very obvious ones like your PowerPoint, your Word, your Excel. Everybody knows you have to know those tools like you must be able to use Word, you must be able to do some, you know, analysis and stuff in Excel, and you must be able to put together a presentation. So I don't need to talk about that. That is assumed that you already know those very important and fundamental tools. So what I'm gonna be showing you are the things that you may not know um, that you might encounter in your next job as a business analyst. And I'd like you to just get, you know, get a feel for what are the tools out there and um, just make sure that you're, you're aware of them. Okay, so let's get started. So the first one is Visio. Now Visio is a part of the Microsoft Office suite, um, but many companies don't turn it on for everybody. You have to really need it to get it because the extra license. Um, so you may not have had it before, but just to know it exists. And it's really a diagramming tool for creating layouts, charts, and graphics. Business analysts typically use it for modeling processes and designing flows. So it's a very well known tool among people who need to create diagrams. And of course we are those people. So as a business analyst, this is one of the tools that you'd likely be using. And you can do many things in it. So for example, here I have, I'm not gonna go into the tool because I don't have access to do that right now, but I'm giving you some screenshots of what I've seen others do off the web. So in this example, you're looking at is, um, a flowchart and you can easily in the tool, just pick a shape, drag it over, put some text on it, you know, draw your lines and there you go. You have your, um, your flowchart. And there's a lot of templates there so you don't have to start from scratch. It's a very, very useful tool. Here's another one where you can do like a swim lane and you get more fancy with it. And you can, you know, map out a process by the different you know actors and so on based on what you're trying to model here's another one that's just kind of showing distribution which is a nice graphic that would you know probably tell the story better than words and you can do that easily by grabbing the preset shapes that they have for you again over into this area and that's how you do it you can also do like network diagrams this is one that has a bunch of computers connected and all this kind of stuff you can do that as well because they already have the shapes ready that you can pick and pull and you know drag and drop. Here's one about SWOT analysis, which gets into more of like a smart art kind of thing with all these different shapes and stuff. Or you can get as fancy as you want or as simple as you want. You can change the colors, you can change the way it's organized. Um, very, very flexible there. So yeah, so that's your Visio. So moving on to Jira. Now Jira is a very popular tool used wherever they're doing agile development. And the entire tool has, it's like a suite of tools and there are different versions of Jira and it looks different based on the version that you have and the license that you have. And then there's Confluence and Jira and there's a bunch of other things. So it can be a little confusing. Even the logo is confusing. It's the same product, but look, it has different logos 
<laughs> with the same name. So they're just wild over there at Jira. But it's a very, very popular tool, right? It's a software tool for managing the agile development process. It allows managing product development, tracking bugs and issues, and offers some reporting capabilities as well. So a lot of companies do use this at different levels, mainly like enterprise companies that are deep in the agile methodology. And I'm gonna jump right in and show you a little bit about it right now. So this is my instance of Jira. And again, I signed up for the one that was Jira with Confluence. Uh, Confluence is just another add-on product that's kind of more for recording uh, requirements, writing and so on. Whereas the Jira is more in the agile process um, for the development lifecycle. So if I were to go into my Jira um, version and it's it might look different based on the one that you have because as I told you, there's a number of different products in the whole Jira Appalachian suite and it could look different based on the one that you have. But just for for an example, I have the I have this one and I could show you like this is an epic. And then you kind of break things down based on epics and features and sprint they're in and you know the whole agile process. So in this case, um, well, oh, it's showing you charts. So yeah, we have a bunch of charts that's available. The burn down chart is one that's very popular. There's burn up and there's a number of other ones. Um, and let's say you wanted to go search. I could go to epics are denoted with this purple icon and stories are with the green icon. If you had tasks, they would have like a blue colored icon. So if I wanted to look at a epic, then you could see all the stories in the epic, the progress they're in. If I had other users, I could assign them and you'd see the user's avatar to show who's assigned. And then there's this running bar that shows you the progress. Um, you can add comments to the epics or even the stories. Let's say, let's say I go into one of these stories. Um, you can see which sprint it's assigned to. You can have priority, you could have story points on there. Um, a bunch of stuff that you could have based on um, what you're looking at. Um, and then you can also look at your backlog. So if I go to backlog, it'll show you all the stories that are currently assigned to a sprint. So I have a sprint and I named it sprint one and I'm gonna call it blue. People name sprints in various ways. Some people name sprints by fruits, by their favorite musician. I mean, it's just whatever your team wants to do. Um, once you have an epic though, uh, Jira itself will assign like a background color to the epic so you can easily spot it. And I think it's a randomly generated color. I could be wrong, but that's what I've noticed. Um, it gives it a, you know, it gives it a number based on how you set that up. And as you look at your sprint, you can like drag a story from the sprint back into the backlog. Um, you can prioritize stories based on how you think it should be worked on. Sorry, I should click and then drag, <laughs> right? So you could say maybe this one is done first. So you put this at the top. Um, having some trouble with my dragging today, okay. So things like that. So you can, it's very friendly to reorganize, to prioritize and things like that. And of course, when you're inside of a story, let's say you're inside of one of these, you can see it in the side panel or you can click on the number for the story. It opens it up in its own tab and things like that. You can leave a comment. I mean, this is not a fully fleshed out story. Don't, don't look at that. But if it had its acceptance criteria and all that stuff, you could add attachments to it. You could link to other stories in it. Um, link in a page even, you could add comments and you add mention your team members. So it's very collaborative, right? It's very collaborative. And it's the number one agile methodology um, management tool that enterprise companies are using. So it will be useful for you to know, okay? Um, so yeah, that's basically how um, Jira works. Um, again, you can, you have, various ways to see stuff, things pop out, you can scroll through things. It's It uses the real estate <laughs> on your screen very, very well. So these are some of the ways in which you can use um, Jira. Okay.
Okay, so having now seen Jira, I have found another alternative to Jira that has been very, very impressive. Like it really impressed me when I used it. And this one is called Target Process. So it is a Jira-like tool. It exists in the cloud and it is very, I found it to be very user-friendly and has all the same features, but if you're not careful, it might even be easier to use than Jira is. Obviously it's not as popular because you know Jira is probably the most popular one, but if you're looking for an alternative, then I think target process could be a good choice. So target process is a tool for managing projects and teams. It has features to help manage the agile process for features, stories, um, bugs, um, and also includes some reporting. So I'm just gonna jump in real quick and show you a little bit about target process. Okay, so this is target process. Um, I haven't used it in a while, so I might be a little bit rusty, but basically you can look at your backlog. You can reorganize stories as you see fit. You can see um, what the status they are in, the progress of each one, which um, epic they are assigned to. You can do reporting on this. I think you can see a burn down chart. Um, and some other things you can do some sprint planning sprint timeline for more on the scrum side of things you can see who's working on what which stories are there um just a bunch of stuff whatever you can do in um jira i've noticed that you can do the same here um let's see what this is it's going to be clicking around to see what happens i guess this is a timeline i don't have much there so it's not showing much um uh, I can see all the stuff assigned to me and what I'm working on. I can go into a story and I can see details of it. I can see um, which issue, the source. I can have some custom fields here to make it customizable. I can look at who it came from. I can look at um, the history of it. Of course, you can mention, you, know, you can put a comment and at mention someone so that they're tagged in it um and things like that so it's very very similar to to jira that's what i've noticed it's very similar you can create features you can create epics um obviously you can create stories you can create tasks you can link your stories together to show the dependencies or things like that um just a very i find it to be easier to use and i'm saying that with quotation marks because there are some things that could be easy to others and not to others so <laughs> but i'm just i'm impressed with it because it's so robust um and you can look at it in different views so if you want to see it in a kanban style view you can um if you want to see it by progress well nothing's coming up here maybe i don't have any progress again this is my um my personal instance which is has a lot of dummy data in there so it's just a very jira like tool so you're not missing out on it okay so now on to one of my favorite little gems trello so trello um can be used enterprise level or personal level it's just a great tool to organize things with so it's a cloud-based tool that has a Kanban style to it, right? This is great for organizing ideas into the lists. So at first when it came out, it was really a personal use to make sure, you know, you get your to-do list done and things like that. So it was really not um, only enterprise. And then it got bought by Jira in 2017, I think. And now you can have your to-do lists that you can link to your actual user stories over there in Jira. And now it becomes very powerful and now it becomes very enterprise. So now you can have everything organized in your Trello. And when you're ready to actually get it into development, you just, from your Trello card, create a Jira ticket with a click of a button and that's done. So it's become very powerful with that addition. And now I use Trello 
for everything, right? For everything. It is such a wonderful tool. I'm just going to jump in real quick and show you my personal instance of it. So let's go look at it. So here's my instance of Trello. I only have one board right now, but as you can see, I could easily create as many boards as I like. And if I had other people on my team, I could go here and invite them and you'd see their lists, right? The list of their names right here. So it's very, very convenient. So let's look at my board. And this is a very simple board. All I have is just a few columns and you can always go ahead and create more columns by just clicking on the last option in the list and it will allow you to create another column. All right. And um, so I have a to-do list. These are just cards in my list and I can drag them anywhere and reorganize them anywhere. So that makes it very easy to use. Um, I can always add a new card. I can even drag the entire list to reorganize it. Um, so that's kind of how it works. So Trello can be um, very useful if you have a team that you're working with. So you can invite teams, you can make comments. Let's say for this one, um, I could write a comment here. And if I had another team member, I could add mention them and they would get a notification that I mentioned them on Trello. I can get what they call power-ups. Power-ups are ways in which you can add different things to your Trello. So you can do voting so people in your team can vote. You can sync your Trello to Jira because now they're owned by the same company. So you can take a Trello ticket and have it create an issue in Jira, which is great. Um, there is like a Dropbox power-up. There is Slack power-up. I mean, there's so many things that you can do. Google Drive, you can attach documents in there. Um, all of these things you can do to enhance your JIRA. So JIRA has become a very useful tool for a lot of us who really have to, we have so much doing that you have to organize it some way. And you can start your day off with your Trello board and that will help you to organize yourself better. All right, so that is Trello. Again, a very useful tool and something that I think every BA needs to, to know about and use. So on to my other little secret gem, Balsamic. Balsamic uh, is a tool that allows you to do mockups and wireframes um, to aid in your requirements. So you can quickly grab elements and put them onto a canvas and create this wireframe or this mockup so that you have a visual when you're talking about some new design or some new feature that you're coming up with and you want people to kind of visualize what you're talking about. So let's jump into the tool and see what it's like. So Balsamic is fairly easy to use. You literally just create a wireframe and then you can start just dragging things onto the page. Here's a button you just added. Let's say I wanted a text field somewhere. You add it there. No, you can just keep adding elements as you see fit. The checkbox over here. Um, there you go. I mean, this screen is not looking very, <laughs> very cute right now. But, you know, you can play with it. Let's say this is a uh, OK button. And this is a cancel button. All right, there you go. You've got some fields over here. You can add pictures, you can add other things. Say, okay, let's put a link somewhere. Link to carolise.com or something, right? You arrange it, you align it, you can put a picture for a logo if you wanted to. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fairly easy to just get elements on there. Let's say I have an icon for adding a user or something. There you go, a bunch of icons here that you can pick from. If you wanted to do a mock-up on an iPad or a mobile phone or something, you could pick one of these. Um, probably shouldn't do that right now though. I'll remove it, but I'm just trying to show you the, the range of elements in the toggle button, bunch of stuff, a whole lot of stuff that you can pick from. And it's just literally dragging them and dropping them onto your canvas. And then when you're ready, you can um, present this to your team 
and you can pick it apart and change it very easily. And so that's the power of Balsamic right now. All right. So the other thing I want you to pay attention to is Salesforce. Now Salesforce is a CRM, which stands for Customer Relationship Management, that includes marketing, sales, commerce, and many other services to help enterprise customers, or anybody at all, because even you can have a trial Salesforce or even small businesses to actually manage their clients and their customers. So it includes things like leads and opportunities and accounts and things like that to help you to manage the clients that you have and give you a 360 view of your clients um, and what they're doing. So Salesforce is very powerful. Um, it is the number one CRM out there. I'm sure you've heard of it. But I think as a business analyst, the reason why I want you to pay attention to Salesforce is because I've seen that in the job market, they're asking for Salesforce business analysts. So it's a person who has the business analysis skills, but can do that using the Salesforce platform. So I think it's a very powerful um, knowledge set to have. And if you can get it, that would be great for your career. Um, it's going to be difficult for you to understand the power of Salesforce if you're just using your own little trial for your own personal use because you'd have to have it set up in such a way to see how it is solving real world business problems. So if at your company you can somehow get a license because of what you're doing and be able to get in there and play with it and learn it, that would be absolutely wonderful for you. If you can't, there are you know courses out there you can take. Um, to learn Salesforce, to understand it, because I think this is going to be one of the things that would really catapult your career and increase your earnings and all that because it's such a powerful and popular um, tool. You're not losing if you bank your career on Salesforce. Now, I was not able to go into an instance to show you it, so I just grabbed some screenshots from the web. Um, so here's one that they've set up again. It's very customizable. It's very, you know, you can do almost anything with it, right? You can create your own rules. You can create your own, you can put your, you can embed things in there. You can do your plugins. I mean, integration. There's just so much going on in Salesforce that no two companies will have the same setup, you know, right? Everybody's doing it as it works for them and their business. And as you can see in this screenshot, for example, they have a number of integration stuff over here. Quip, um, there's, I think Chatter comes with Salesforce if you, if you get that module. But there's just so much going on um, that you can make it look however and do whatever almost. Here's another screenshot of somebody using the Lightning version, I think, of Salesforce. Um, and you can change the tabs. So normally you have your leads, your opportunities, you know, you can be looking at a client in different ways. Um, here they have some scorecard going on. You can embed news feeds. Uh, you can have integrations to your Outlook, to whatever. You can send email from here. You can have your call plans. It is just that um, robust. You can create your own workflow and have it set inside of Salesforce. Um, you can do so much. It's just really, really a powerful platform. So I encourage you to learn about it and to at least know about it so that you can speak to it, right? So that's my advice on Salesforce. <laughs> Very powerful platform. So there are tons and tons of tools out there, and I'm sure I'm going to miss some of them. And if you see any that I have missed that you think is very common, please put it in the comments. But yeah, there's a lot of tools. Um, you know, it's hard to exhaust all the tools that there are. So I just put a slide together to show you some of the more common ones at the enterprise level. So Sure CRM, Microsoft Dynamics 365, and SAP C4C are all CRM tools. And they are the more common ones. And I just talked about Salesforce, which is also very common. But I think as a business analyst, you should know at least a CRM tool you should know about CRM because it's such a common thing in the workplace that any one of these tools that you can get access to would be good for you to develop in your career. 
And then of course there's SharePoint. So because we're always creating documents and always having all this documentation behind our requirements, we can use SharePoint to create a wiki or just to upload the documents. So it's one of those tools that's also very well used um, in the enterprise level. Then there is some HP tools. So there, this one is a quality center. It goes hand in hand with HP ALM. And this is just tools to manage the testing process and keeping the quality of your software. Um, you can write requirements in there too if you want, but a lot of the time people are using it for testing purposes. And if you're a waterfall, then you might be familiar with Rational Rose, which is a part of the Rational Unified process and is a tool that goes along with creating all those UML diagrams and very heavy waterfall type um, requirements gathering and processes will use uh, Rational Rose. Again, it's a legacy system. So if you're like a huge organization, that has been around for many, many years, you're likely to be using something like this, Rational Rose. And then there is SAP. So just know, knowing any SAP product would be good. There is Crystal Reports, there's a bunch of other things there from SAP. Very well known, very robust, very prominent in the enterprise level applications that companies are using. And then there is Tableau. Tableau is mainly for data aggregation and you know data analysis. A lot of the times as a business analyst, you're not really doing the data analysis as much. It's more like data analysts that would do that. But you still should know about Tableau. And if you can get an access to these things, then please make your way to do that. Most of these software are gonna be you know, you're going to require a license. You may not get a free trial or anything like that. So it's going to be difficult for you to get your hands on these. But if you can in any way maneuver so that you can get access or you get a license or you get a login, that would be great because that would really help you to build skills that you can use wherever you go because these are very common, very well used, very well known um, enterprise level software. So those are the tools I think will help you in your career as a business analyst. So go try them out. Some of them are free. So you can get a trial and check them out and let me know. Please like the video, subscribe, and I will see you.